Welcome aboard, folks. To all of our regular viewers, welcome back. Today, we're gonna review the Clarity Aloft Flex Headset. We will be reviewing the headset on the basis of the categories that we have reviewed other headsets on this channel. So there will be performance, comfort, build quality, functionality, value for money, durability, style, and then we'll wrap it all up in the conclusion, give you some pros and cons. Overall, from a performance standpoint, uh, I think Clarity Aloft did a fantastic job with this headset. Uh, so like I said in other videos, it's, it's kind of a really challenging instrument to, to be very innovative with, right? Because the mission at hand, the objective that the device has to accomplish, the, the job is, pretty simple and the way to go about making that happen you you got to attenuate noise right so you got some variants of either over the ear around the ear you have on ear and you have in ear the clarity loft flex is in ear with the earbuds you just squish them like you would on a regular earplug and and that's how the headset goes into your ear uh, from a noise standpoint it does the attenuation through passive means only meaning there's no active or electronic noise cancellations of any sort on this headset everything is done passively via the comply ear tips uh, they are threaded on the inside and they are special and they do attenuate noise phenomenally well their website claims from the 150 to 300 hertz, it attenuates noise uh, 30 decibels. And from 4,000 to 8,000, it attenuates 47 decibels. I am referencing my notes to make sure I don't mess any of these numbers up for you. And observed performance aboard the flight deck of the Boeing 737 aircraft. Uh, does check that out. This headset does perform really well and the noise attenuates really well. I would say it does come close to the top of the line Bose 820, the David Clark's uh, DC-1X. Then the microphone itself is very quiet. I've just reviewed in the recent past the Clarity Aloft's Pro Plus headset, which is the TSO version. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar, the TSO means that it's been certified by the FAA and the headsets used in the flight decks of aircraft that are uh, carrying passengers around typically are required to be TSO'd. So from Clarity Aloft, you have the Pro Plus and you have the Flex. I did run into an issue with the Pro Plus where the mic noise was very significant. It was picking up a lot of background noise. With the Flex, I did not run into that issue. So the microphone was really quiet and performed really well in the loud flight deck environment that is the Boeing 737 aircraft. As far as comfort is concerned, this headset just knocks it out of the park, really. Uh, it does a fantastic job on so many levels, and I just would like to give tremendous props and kudos to uh, Clary Loft for designing this headset. Very innovative. No other like it in the industry. It truly doesn't have a competition at this design style. It weighs in at 0.77 ounces, so you don't even know it's there. It has the adjustable band in the back, and it adjusts like so. So you route your wires back there, and then uh, you just place the band uh, at whatever uh, size it has to be at uh, for it to be comfortable around your head. These little loops uh, go around your ear, and so to put it on, you just go ahead and wrap it around the back of your head, and then if you'd like to make it tighter, you just bring those little uh, two black circles I showed you a little spread them out and it'll tighten it up and just make it as, as as tight as you'd like to make it. Overall the headset it is extremely comfortable. I had one day where I flew eight hours of flight time so very long day two flights and did not experience any discomfort whatsoever with the headset. So you know that they did a fantastic job. No heat points, no pressure points, nothing. Really great. 
And then to put on the earbuds, you just go ahead and squeeze them and shape them as you would like. Uh, to do it correctly, you gotta pull your ear from the back and then you push it in and then the earbud is in. As I'm demonstrating putting on this headset, this is one of those, uh, as I'm showing it to you, it is one of the downsides of this headset. It's a procedure to put it on. It is not an easy on, easy off uh, type of headset, and it is an extremely delicate instrument. Sticking with the, the comfort uh, category still, there are some things to keep in mind. Uh, number one would be how you route your wire. So on one instance, I was experiencing uh, some discomfort with the headset because this wire was pushing up on my boom and it was uh, giving me a weird feel on the ear. So where you clip your headset, the very first point that you clip it to, in your uniform is going to impact kind of the tension of this wire and that will impact whether it's pushing the headset up or down or forward or back or as you move your head if the wire is rubbing you're going to hear it uh, because it's rubbing the wire and it's all connected you're gonna hear it inside of your ear so it is very important to make sure that you have the wire correctly routed and clipped at the proper place in your uniform or your clothing for the GA guys, your attire, wherever you happen to clip it, so that you do not uh, cause any discomfort. So I did manage to do it incorrectly once, then I just fixed it, and once it is properly clipped, it it is extremely comfortable. No, no discomfort associated with that. So... I would say that in the entire aviation industry, this headset is probably the most comfortable headset out there. There is no headband around the top of your head. So, you know, I do wear product to have coarse, thick hair, and uh, you don't have any of that artificial hair headband associated with your headset. So no headband, no pressure points, no heat points. Overall, extremely comfortable. You don't even know you have it on. It, it's, it's that good. The build quality is a little bit tough to, to, to analyze because it is such a delicate device, uh, an instrument that it does raise questions about the longevity of the device. How many years are you gonna be able to get out of it? Because the wires are so thin. I've had clarity alofts in the past. I had one in particular lasted eight years. So that was fantastic. It was not, however, as, as delicate as this with the thin little wire exposed and, and showing all around. The, the thin wire was a, a smaller section. So it never cracked. It, it, did, it performed really well. So it might not be an issue as you go through the years wearing the headset. Just something to think about. Overall, in the online community and, and reviews I've seen, some people do report it uh, being a problem. Others don't report it being a problem. So, you know, uh, it, it basically on a user basis. I think it'll greatly depend on your capacity to be very cautious, cognizant, and aware when, when putting the headset on, taking it off, and putting it away. As long as you are aware of what you're doing, you're not tugging, pulling, or yanking anything, or if you're cautious with this instrument, I, I do think it'll probably last you a long time. But if, if you're a little clumsy and, and you start pulling on things, it's, it's probably not going to work out so well. And still in the build quality category, we have the case. So again, another home run by Clarity Aloft here. When you're looking at traveling with, a, with your headset, which all the commercial pilots I have to do. If you have a private airplane, you can leave it in your aircraft. But, you know, for, the, for us that are working out there, you do need to pack it in your bag. This is the most compact TSO headset that I know of. So it's a huge selling point. Extremely compact, durable, great quality, hard case. Uh, packing the headset in here takes some getting used to. It is, it is tight. Uh, you could do it. You got to be careful not to put any undue pressure on any sensitive or delicate areas. But, you know, you just put the headset in here, 
and and you're good to go. And this is so nice. It's so space saving that uh, highly recommended uh, to travel with this headset. Uh, the case does a fantastic job. So a huge plus for Clarity Loft there. And going down the list here, next up we have a functionality. I believe that in order to keep the weight down, perhaps R&D cost and overall cost of the product at the end, um, they had to save uh, some money there on the electronics aspect of this headset. So not many uh, functionality uh, options associated with this headset, particularly when you compare it to the Bose 820, the DC-1X, where you have just a very long list of functions. On this guy, you got your volume rocker, stereo mono selector, and your aux in. That's it. <laughs> nice and simple. Uh, you don't have the Bluetooth, you don't, you don't have any of the fancy on and off stuff associated with um, A&R because it's not an ANR headset. So it simplifies things. And while that may be a real problem for some, it's actually really positive on the other end as well. You don't have batteries. You don't have to deal with reliability problems associated with ANR and all the electronic components that go into that. So very nice and straightforward. Not much to break, which probably does uh, overall increase the reliability. You can switch the location of the boom mic from the right to the left. This is huge, right? So if you fly often in both seats, for those of you out there that are instructors uh, and you like to switch your the location of your boom, you can do so. Um, if you're a first officer and then you go to captain, or if you're captain, then you go to first officer, you can switch the location of your boom. And the side in which the boom is located is not as big of a deal as the fact that the boom has the main wire. That's where the advantage really comes in. Then you can route your, your uh, wire in the shortest possible distance to where it connects to the aircraft. Because if you're, for example, right here, you're in the captain's seat, you're on the left seat of the aircraft, and you have uh, this headset um, with the boom on the right, then you gotta route your wire around your front as it goes to your jack on your left, uh, which is a problem because it's going to be a much longer travel for the wire, and it'll likely pull and tug. So given the simplicity of the design, as far as what they were, minimalistic, that's perhaps a better word. It's a very minimalistic design. The fact that they were able to accommodate switching the boom left to right, right to left, fantastic, great job. Um, it is not an easy procedure though. You do have to disconnect the wire from the clips in the back of your head and the boom from, from where it connects, and then place it on the other side and rewire your wires, reroute your wires. So, you know, uh, not something you wanna be doing on the fly, really. You, you wanna do this in a very calm, cool and collected environment. Make sure you have it set, comfortable and adjusted before showing up to the flight deck and trying to do it not exactly a pre-flight duty that you would like to undertake uh, unless you don't have a schedule and you can just spend a good amount of time there. Then, you know, if you're a private pilot, then then I guess, yes, that, that wouldn't be a problem. But if scheduling is a factor, uh, not a quick process, ju just something to keep in mind. At the time of this recording, this is valued being sold at $775. It is the flagship product from Clarity Aloft. And I do think it, it has, it definitely earns its place within their lineup. Like I said, it is TSO, it is extremely light and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's fantastic. I think it is, it is definitely worth the price. The only big question with regards to that price is durability and longevity. 
are you gonna get your money's worth with the life expectancy of this instrument? The uh, wearables in the headset would be your mic puff and your earbuds. The uh, earbuds are from Comply. They're $25 for uh, six pairs. And the six will last you anywhere from realistically six to 12 months, depending on how often you're flying. Uh, and also depending on uh, your level of uh, your tolerance to the overall sound attenuation. So the difference in this uh, headset style is that the overall performance of attenuation of the noise will slowly decrease over time as the earbuds are worn so you will have to replace them. So how often you replace them will be up to you. Obviously, if you replace it every two weeks without flying much, you're always gonna be at optimum level of noise attenuation. A personal level, I, I tended to get about a month out of these uh, before I, I had to replace them. I wrote down a few lists here of uh, pros and cons uh, for us to kind of wrap up this, this uh, review of the product. And I'll just go down the list, make sure we're not missing anything. Uh, from, from a pro's standpoint, the headset is super light. No way you're going to not even notice you have it on your head. Inconspicuous design. If you're a lady, you have the long hair. Or if you're a guy, you got the long hair. You put this around uh, the back of your head and you basically don't even know it's there. You just got the boom. That's it. So very clean, aesthetically pleasing design. Uh, overall looks great, I think. No pressure points, no heat buildup from the headset. So I strongly recommend this headset for the GA guys. Um, you know, the, a lot of those flight decks are not air conditioned. So you're gonna be the coolest possible with this headset. Um, you, you know, there's a, there's a lot to be said about that when your flight deck's at 100 Fahrenheit. And uh, if you got the good old clamps, uh, you're gonna sweat a lot more. With the air conditioned environments, you know, uh, you, you can wear a clamp and not sweat as much or at all if it's uh, the air conditioning is strong enough and you can cool it uh, cold enough in the flight deck. So it is particularly beneficial to those environments where the air conditioning is not strong enough or you have none. Great noise attenuation for such a small package. The microphone did a fantastic job, crystal clear communication with uh, attenuating uh, very well the background noise. The Boeing 737 aircraft, as I'm sure you know, a rather loud aircraft, so it provides a good environment to get a good feel for the headset. The small travel case also makes it ideal for travel. It occupies very little space in your bag. So what are some of the downsides? Why so far, as they've done a great job, and there's a lot of positives. So why wouldn't you uh, like this? Well, as it turns out, for the Part 121 operators out there, the scheduled transport of passengers, so basically the airlines, um, you are likely not operating the same aircraft every day throughout the entire day. So you got to go in and out of aircraft, right? So say three flights in one day, three different uh, aircraft. So you have to unset and set yourself up every single time. Stow and put away and then set it back up. And it does take just a little bit of time, but typically when you're taking your headset off or putting it back on, it's during pretty crucial moments. Um, in the pre-flight, after you finished and you're about to start your, your, your push back and, and push off the gate, you'd like to get your headset on quickly because that's kind of where everybody's just getting ready to bug out. Uh, this takes a little bit of time. If you're gonna eat or drink, which happens a lot, uh, especially with, with the airlines, uh, you know, oftentimes the flights are five hours and they're really long. So you will be drinking water and coffee, uh, particularly early morning, you'll be doing a lot of coffee. And then on the longer flights, you'll be eating a meal as well. The headset isn't particularly easy to get out of the way. It doesn't do that good of a job of getting out of the way. It is obviously a byproduct of its design. 
And I wouldn't say it's necessarily a flaw. It's just inherent to its design. So that does create a little bit of a problem. And, it, you know, this is on a personal level. We'll, you know, leave it up to you. If you're experiencing the flight deck and you're eating and drinking, if you think it's a big deal to, to get it out of the way and if it's out of the way enough for you. For me, I didn't enjoy that part of the experience. So every time I had to communicate, put the boom back on, and then I wanted to sip some coffee to get the boom out of the way, it was a cumbersome process. And you're doing that many times throughout the flight. So that does create a problem. In the flight deck, on a long flight, you got to take a restroom break. Again, another time where you're going to be setting it up and uh, taking it off. You're not going to stow it, uh, but you are going to take it off of your head and put it somewhere. So putting this delicate instrument somewhere in the flight deck, again, something to think about. You can't just uh, throw it. It doesn't hang really well. It just creates a little bit of a complication there. I know this is minutia. It may not be a factor for you, particularly if you're GA, but I'm just giving you the honest input uh, from a part 121 scheduled airline pilot uh, experience and using it for a very long period of time on a per day basis. I do think that this is one of the very best headsets in the industry, if not the very best, especially for the GA guys, because in those flights, you're not doing eating, you're not going to the restroom, uh, you don't have air conditioning, and you don't have to take your headset out while you're in the flight deck in duty, on duty. So I do think that this headset would perform particularly well in a particularly pleasant manner to those who are in the GA world. For the 121 guys, again, I still strongly recommend it. Go ahead and buy it, try it for yourself. Let me know if you agree with some of the complications I ran into, but otherwise I do think it is a fantastic headset. I do really like it and I do highly recommend it. And in the near future, hopefully we'll be doing a, kind of a comparison review between some of the big hitters and seeing how they performed um, in a Boeing 737 aircraft as we go about. I'll also be doing a video on just the factors that you need to think about when selecting a headset. Uh, in one of my introductions before, I did talk quite a bit about it, but I think it's, it's enough of a subject. We should probably just make one video dedicated for that, where we're going to be telling you all the things you need to think about when making this very important purchasing decision, because it, it does... It is a filter that will determine how you experience your environment. Not just ATC, but aircraft sounds, switch sounds, and all of the mechanical noises that you hear in the aircraft. And to the dedicated professional, all of those things are cues and are very important to the safe and effective operation of your aircraft on a day-to-day -day basis. Folks, uh, hopefully uh, you got something out of this video. Like, share, and subscribe. Definitely appreciate you sharing your time with us. And we'll see you on the next one. Have a good flight.